Hai assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So today I'm going to give uh, the introduction of our um, group assignment And the, the introduction is about the COVID-19 outbreak So the COVID-19 outbreak emerged in December 2019 from Wuhan city, Hubei province, China And spread to the rest of the world This disease was named COVID-19 by World Health Organization To date 17th April 2020, a total of 2,230,439 cases of COVID-19 and 150,000 uh, cases of death and 564,000 recovered cases have been reported worldwide. Um, uh, since 12th December 2019, this virus or this um, disease <coughs> originating from the Hunan South China Seafood Market uh, and on the 70 uh, and on the 7th January 2020 the Chinese scientists isolated the unknown virus sample from an infected person and sequenced its genome using the next gene sequencing tool they reported the, vi uh, the virus had 96.3 percent genetic similarity with um, Yunnan bat coronavirus and on the 25th January 2020 the uh, first cases COVID-19 was detected in Malaysia and tracked back to three Chinese nationals who previously had um, close contact with an infected person in Singapore they had traveled into Malaysia via Singapore on the 24th January 2020 um, and they were treated at Sungai Bulu Hospital, Selangor, Malaysia. The MOH quickly devised standard guidelines for the management of COVID-19 and 34 hospitals and screening centers were specifically designed in each state of Malaysia, including Kuala Lumpur Hospital. The first Malaysian was confirmed with COVID-19 on the 4th February 2020 um, the 41-year-old man had recently returned from Singapore when he started to develop a fever and cough. He was quarantined at Sungai Buloh Hospital, Selangor on the same day. A 4-year-old Chinese national girl who had been isolated at Sultana, Ma Sultana Maliha Hospital, Langkawi, since the 29th January 2020 had recovered, been discharged and was allowed to return to China. The number of positive cases increased beyond 550 cases on the 16 March uh, 2020 and the Prime Minister of Malaysia announced a movement control order. So this was the first MCO. Social distancing was to be in place for 14 days which is 18 March to 31st March 2020 to reduce the rapid spread of COVID-19. <laughs> so um, right now the situation of COVID-19 worldwide still not resolved and we're still fighting this pandemic. That's all from me. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today our group will be represent um, the effect of COVID-19 to the economy in Malaysia. So we are going to talk about the economic problems and economic effects by the COVID-19. Uh, pandemic. <clears throat> so by now, it's clear that this pandemic will have intensely damaging effects on both the Malaysian macroeconomy as well as on the economic welfare of the um, Malaysian. The main sources of economic damage in Malaysia are twofold. The first one is the knock-on effect from the impact of the coronavirus abroad. Uh, the second is generated domestically due to the newly imposed movement control measures. Um, Alright, so long before the partial lockdown measures in Malaysia, the outbreak of the coronavirus in China had created wide-ranging supply and demand shocks that have rever uh, reverberated uh, across the globe. And commodity exporters around the world revered lower price as Chinese demand collapsed, while global manufacturers face production cuts as Chinese factories are locked down. Um, in Malaysia, the effect of these China shocks may be dire. The Malaysian economy was 
amongst their most highly exposed economies in the region um, to both the Chinese demand and supply. China is Malaysia's number one trading partner, a large source of foreign investment and its top tourist source uh, outside of Asia. So this is one of the effects of coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic to Malaysia, uh, Malaysian's economy. Hi, my name is Kero Adam Zafri from BA1143A. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of Malaysia have imposed the Movement Control Order, also known as the MCO. Due to the strict MCO standard operating procedure, Honda have decided to stop multiple plants in Malaysia. So due to the closing of plants in Malaysia, it has affected the macroeconomic objectives, which is full employment will not be achieved and there will be lower quality of life. So what is full employment? Full employment is the level of employment rate where there is no existence of cyclical or involuntary unemployment. So due to Honda's closing the plants in Malaysia, Honda will lay off some of their workers to lower their company's costs. Next is quality of life. Quality of life is a decent living to enjoy, to be enjoyed by the community, which includes basic need of shelter, infrastructure, employment opportunities and education. So due to some of the workers of Honda being laid off, they might not have money to pay for their home and they have no employment opportunities, therefore lowering their quality of life. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mama Imanis and today I will talk about the economic growth relate, but related to the Honda uh, company. So uh, all the Honda cars factory in Malaysia will be close uh, to decrease the amount of COVID-19 cases. Um, the process of production will be freeze because the workers or employees are not allowed to working because the government of Malaysia didn't allow this sector to be operate during this MCO. Um, the Honda also stopped the production for a while and they agreed because the government will be decrease the tax to generate the economic growth when the MCO is finished. So this is why um, the Honda um, stopped the production and agreed to do so. That's all for me. Hi and assalamualaikum. My name is Afif Nur Imam Bebadru Zambri. So I will continue this presentation and I will explain about macroeconomic objective which is to achieve price stability. So basically to achieve price stability, it is related to inflation and deflation. So inflation is an increase in general price level and deflation is when the overall when the overall price level decreases so that inflation rate becomes negative is a challenge to every nation, especially due to this pandemic COVID-19. So an inflation rate that is associated with a sustained increase in the general general price level can be disastrous to an economy uh, and deflation can be disastrous to an economy too because uh, it is lead, it leads to a problem of increased unemployment due to slack in demand. So the quantity of goods and services purchased will be less if the inflation rate is high and purchasing power will increase because of impact from deflation make consumer think positively. Besides maintaining price stability is really important to policy makers. It is it is the effort it is the effort of ensuring that the inflation and deflation rate in the country is kept at the best level for the economy. This involves certain macroeconomic policies such as, such as fiscal and monetary policy. So based on the Ministry of Finance MOF Economic Report 2020 per 2021, Malaysia inflation as measured by the Consumer Price Index CPI is projected to normalize at 
2.5% in 2021 after Malaysia economy slipped into the slip into deflation as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak in 2020. So we can see that macroeconomic objective from the conventional perspective cannot achieve price stability because as we know Malaysia cannot avoid inflation and deflation. So however Venturing price stability is a must to avoid uncertainty and disruption in the economy. It is also means that consumers and businesses can safely pursue long-term consumption and production plans. So, uh, next I will talk about macroeconomic objective based uh, based on conventional perspective and Islamic perspective, which is to achieve an equitable distribution of income. So I can see that from both perspective, which is conventional and Islamic, both, perpe- both perspective emphasize that equitable distribution of income is important to ensuring macroeconomics at its best to every nation. But due to COVID-19, it, it affects the economy of the country when supply and demand shock due to COVID-19. It is must be related to income and surely the income will be in equality. So in conventional perspective, it is necessary to ensure that the economic growth of a nation is shared, is shared equally among the population. When the, when the income is in equality, it is major concern for policymakers to resolve the problem. So this, this situation, uh, basically occurs particularly in multiracial countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, no, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, and the United States. Sorry for it. the Indonesia. It is not in the um, multiracial countries. So next, uh, every policymaker tries to ensure that there is no white gap between the rich and the poor. The, the which is policymaker will formulate policy of income redistribution to narrow the gap between the higher income and the lower income group. In Malaysia, this country narrows the gap between the rich and poor by providing equal opportunities through education as more employees have higher skill levels which inequality decreases. Similarly, when entrepreneur from <coughs> similarly when an entrepreneur from less fortunate background have the skill and resources to succeed like lightly high income employees will always come from among the best. Then taxes are seen to play an important role to reduce the income gap between the higher income and the low income group, lower income group to control inequality. A more progressive tax system will also help. So based on statistic, the top marginal income tax rates 25% is lower than most OECD countries and other Asian countries such as Korea 38% and Thailand 35%. More, more progressive taxation will enable the government to finance expanded social security networks, networks that are more consolidated, better targeted, and more in line with the needs of the lower income group. So while, maintain, uh, while maintaining fiscal sustainability. So besides in Islamic perspective, Islam assumes that income redistribution voluntary or compulsory and it is not only an economic necessity but also means to spiritual salvation. The concept rests on its value maximizing human value. So I can see that equitable distribution of income is important and this is mean that Malaysia cannot achieve the macroeconomic objective which is equitable distribution of income because of supply and demand shock. So this is wrong from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mama Akhil. Okay, without wasting our time, I will continue. Okay, during this pandemic, Malaysian government decided to put the country under movement control order MCO, as we all know. Okay, one of the industries that affected by this decision is automotive industry. As an example, based on research from Nikki Asia, Honda Malaysia stopped the production at two factories. Okay, one factory that in planning to make two wheeler vehicle and the other factory is supposed to make four wheeler vehicle. Okay, this issue during pandemic create many problems to many individuals, firm and our country as it against macroeconomic objective. One of the objective that highlight from Islamic perspective is about material well-being. 
this statement means that all resources given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala must be used in the maximum capacity and best possible. As I mentioned earlier, COVID-19 or known as coronavirus created difficult situation which is producers such as Honda Malaysia cannot use their resources to produce their product at best possible. It has something to do with fact that most of us right now cannot afford a vehicle because many people's source of money affected or reduced because of this pandemic. So, as a result, many people will try their best to focus on basic needs first, such as food, shelter, security of their health, and transportation. This Japanese vehicle maker has to freeze their production since they realize that COVID-19 cases has risen drastically in Malaysia and people's demand is falling. It is also made a trouble for certain users because it is now hard to get a brand new Honda vehicle as they freeze the making process in Malaysia. This is the proof that is actually happening in this country which is many people cannot use their resources at their best and it is hard to achieve this objective. Okay, another problem existed. Another problem exists because of COVID-19 is social justice in Malaysia is hard to attain. Okay, generally, social justice from Islamic perspective is minimum standard of living that must be provided by the government. The standard level of living cannot achieve if people are not satisfied with basic need of living that provided by the government. In this scenario, when a decision to hold production of vehicle from Honda Malaysia company, it will also encourage other company in automotive industry such as Toyota and Hyundai to stop gas as well. Due to this problem, it is hard for people that are looking for quality and import vehicle and they will not be satisfied. In addition, as a result of holding production in factories, many people lost their job and their source of income. This will cause people be in trouble to get their basic need in life. Okay, that's like how people are going to pay their rent, how people are going to pay for their food and water, it is a serious problem that should be solved as soon as possible. Otherwise, Malaysia cannot reach macroeconomic objective, which is social justice. Okay, in conclusion, just because of closing of the factory, it will cause macro macroeconomic issue and will put everyone in trouble. Okay, government should play an important role by helping these people that are affected by this issue. In my point of view, okay, government can focus on people that lost their job due to closing of the company. Okay, government can create a job opportunity as much as they can, especially industry that are not affected and still growing this during this pandemic, such as food and beverage industry or courier courier services. Other than that, uh, government can help people with their finances by giving them finance help financial allowance for small businesses and many more. My hope to this country is once the pandemic is over, we can help to grow back our economy. Okay, that is all from us. Thank you for watching.